Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. For once I'm not going to be shooting film, I'm not going to be in a dark room, just going to make a quick video of a bargain find that I found on a marketplace on Facebook from a guy local to where I live. Normally I'll go on eBay or somewhere like that and try and find some, some second hand cameras. You can find them relatively cheap and you can get some really good bargains out there. Um, but this particular one, I was just on the marketplace and I typed in SLR film cameras and one came up only a few miles from where I live. And being living on an island, it's not that easy to, you know, it's not often that you come across bargains like this. So uh, the price was £55. It was for a Shinon CE5 camera. Now I know nothing about this camera whatsoever. I had to do a little tiny bit of research and I had to ask the guy, was, does it work? He said, yep, it all works mechanically well. So I thought, okay, there's no hardship in uh, having a look at the camera. If I like it, buy it. Now, unfortunately, my Canon EF that I acquired about a year ago, some guy gave me this, the, the, uh, the shutter started to become a little bit sticky and you can see it at the bottom there. If I fire the shutter, it's just a little bit sticky as it goes down. And I'm not a repairman at all whatsoever. If I took this camera apart, the chances are there'd be nuts and bolts left over and I wouldn't be able to put it back together again. So, and you know, I don't know how much these things are worth, uh, uh, are to be repaired. I know the light meter doesn't work in it. So um, I'm kind of just gonna put this one on the shelf and I uh, don't know, probably end its life and let it sit there looking pretty. Going back to the Shinon cameras, I've had this one for some years now and I absolutely love this camera. So when I'm shooting it, I'm confident that it's gonna work. Um, it hasn't done me any, any harm at all whatsoever. It's, it's created some fantastic moments for me. So the word Shinon, I thought I could trust. That's why I ended up having a little look at this one. So first of all, I'll talk about the camera. I've only had it a couple of days and uh, I've had a little play with it. I haven't loaded any film in there yet, but um, from what I gather, the, the, the shutter speeds all work fine. The, the lens is free from fungus or anything like that. The timer works and uh, it all seems to be mechanically sound. And the electrics work as well. The light meter works really well. I've tested it against the DSLR and I've got the same reading. So I'm pretty happy to, to go ahead and shoot with this camera. Uh, I'm loads of filming it and shoot with it. But the only thing I don't know is if there's any light leaks. So um, what I'll probably do is when I do get around to shooting this camera, I'll burst off a few frames in bright sun and then I'll just mask the edges off with some black electrical tape uh, and then carry on shooting um, wh whatever I'm going to shoot. That way I'm not going to waste the whole roll with a load of light leaks. I'll see the first few frames if it has any light leaks um, will be naff. So, um, but that's what I'll do when I, when I load some film into it. So it's a pretty simple camera to use. It's um, aperture priority and it's also fully manual function. So there's all your shutter speeds there and they will work. There's your auto function there and that works well. You've also got a bulb mode there as well. And on this side, you've got your ASA or your ISO um, selector. Now, if you look at the front of the camera, there's your timer there, five seconds. That works pretty well. Just click it over. So I was pleased to see that the timer works. No big deal, I'm not gonna go around making selfies. Maybe one or two, but <laughs> nothing too good. <laughs> I'm not interested in selfies. Um, it's got a flash sync as well on the side of it. And the lens is a 50 millimeter 1.7 lens. Hopefully you guys are picking this up on the, on the little GoPro above me. But uh, yeah, so the lens stops down to 1.7. That's your depth of field view there when you press that. And that's your lens release. I'm not sure what this button does on the side. From what I can see, it doesn't do anything. It must do something. I haven't read the manual. I've got the manual, but I haven't read it yet. And uh, it also came with this lens hood as well. Just pop it out, you can take it off. It screws on, and you can take it off. It's a rubber lens hood, and it's got this little plastic bit as well that sits, uh, sort of somehow wiggles inside. But uh, yeah, little tiny rubber lens hood, which is quite handy. And the lens fitment is a K-mount fit. There it is there. Quite a popular little uh, fitment. You can get a lot of those lenses online. I think it's a 1980s camera. And you can see Dixon's, for those that don't live in the UK, that was a uh, electronic, um, electronic store that we used to have years ago. It's gone now. But uh, I can only imagine that this would have been sold as a bundle for Dixon's with the flash and also uh, a uh, auto winder as well. So this is the auto winder that came with it. This has got a box as well. Everything's, everything came boxed. 
Right, that comes off and then you put your auto winder system on. And this has got four AA batteries in it. Now I've got the auto winder system on. And that's quite handy to have. And you turn it on like so. And that's a single shot firing. And that's continuous. And that's on continuous. So, you know, this little tiny bundle is um, also comes with the flash as well. If I put the flash on. There's the flash, but unfortunately, uh, the flash don't work. I tried it out and uh, the flash don't work, but hey ho, I'm not gonna. <laughs> Looks a monster, doesn't it? Look at that. <laughs> I'd love to get the flash working and just do some shots um, using the flash and see how it'd come out, but uh, the flash isn't important to me. So that's the camera, quite a nice little bargain for 55 pounds. Now. Also inside uh, this bundle that the guy, the guy gave me, I'll just show you some of these other bits. Was, uh, I can't even pronounce the name, a Sanagor lens, Sanog, Sanagor lens. And uh, I've got to put my glasses on now. This is a, a 80 to 305 millimeter push and pull lens. And uh, it's macro as well. And I've already tried it out, not with, obviously without film. And uh, yeah, seems to be quite a nice little lens to use. It um, seems in good condition. There's no fog or anything like that. So that's just a little added bonus was this lens. And also got, I mean, look at this case. This is crazy. This case has got gaffer tape all over it. And also got this lens as well. Lens cap on. And this is all in good condition, guys. Um, this is, I don't even know, DDA Optics, whatever that is. Um, it's a 400mm lens. Again, came out fit on there, and uh, I've put that on the camera and had a little play. It's like a telescope on the end of your camera. So again, another little bonus that came with it. And I also got with it this little tiny uh, Tokina, a doubler. So I presume that if I put that 400mm lens on the camera, put this on first and then put the 400mm lens on after, um, it's going to give me 800 mil being a doubler, I suppose you, that's what it would be. Um, that would go on the camera and you put your lens on top. So if you're using a 50 mil lens, this doubler would make it a 100 mil lens. I would have tried this out as well. And everything seems to work really well. Another load of stuff was a load of these filters. I've never used these before. These are called chroma filters. Um, I'll just get one out and show you guys. I presume these are for... Uh, Color photography for the gradient. So you've got a gradient at the top of the filter there. And I just take it that you that's going to gradient your sky and make it a, a different color um, from what it is, or maybe a bit more contrast. But I shoot a lot of black and white, so they're not going to be that great for me. However, there are some black ones in there. Um, but the ones that appeal to me would be the black ones because I've already tried it on a DSLR and I can actually gradient the sky, make the sky a little bit one, one stop darker than, than the rest of the image. Um, so I'll probably use these ones um, in the future on this camera, just a little plane and see how they come out. You know, again, just a little bonus um, within this package that I've got, this bundle. There's a little tiny polarizing filter as well that I've got. And this lens is, um, down glasses, this lens is 49 millimeter. So that's a little polarizing filter I got and also, a little bonus as well, was, if I can get this off, okay. So I've also got these two little adapters as well. So if you've got a 52 millimeter lens, you can attach 49 millimeter filters on it. And the other way as well is if you've got a 49 millimeter lens, you can add 52 millimeter uh, adapters on it, which is really handy because I've got a 52 millimeter red filter for my other cameras, but because this is 49 millimeter, it's not gonna fit, but I'll just put this adapter on and it goes from 49 to 52, so I can use my red filter with this lens um, uh, at some point in the future. So again, another little bonus that I've got these two rings, I've never, something I've never had before. There's also some coking filters as well that I've got, a yellow, orange, and a red that came with it. And there is an adapter that just slides on the top. I don't know where that is, it's somewhere around. This is a good bit of fun, it's like the Bohemian Rhapsody video, you know, the, um, 
the bit where their heads are all rotating round. See if I can show you on the GoPro above me here. Uh, that's it there. It's a bit, it's a bit cuckoo, a bit weird. I don't think I'll actually use this, but um, I don't know. I'll find some use for it maybe in the in the future. But uh, that came in this nice little funky box. Now back. I've got a little star soft filter here as well, so you can point it at candles or whatever, and uh, it'll just give that four or five pointed star look on candles. It's a bit tacky, but um, again, something that's just sitting there for nothing. Also got a light meter. That doesn't work, but um, I don't know, another one for the shelf in the dark room just to sit there and look pretty, I suppose, next to my Canon EF, because I'm not gonna pay to get that re repaired. Um, yeah, so, uh, and then I ended up with something I can only describe as a penis enlarger. Whoop. Um, I, I don't even know what this is. It's a blower. It's, it's, I, I don't know if someone's made this in a chemistry lesson or what, but um, it was in the box and it just, I mean, it, look at it. it I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And also inside the box was a cable release as well, a, a silver one. So, uh, you know, a lot of the ones you buy online are, are relatively cheap and will probably break. This one looks quite durable. So, um, you know, handy to keep that, very handy. Also inside the box was an Ilford Sportman. Again, another little museum piece that I'll probably put in my darkroom um, on the shelf. Right, and then it didn't stop. I ended up with little books. There's an A to Z guide of photography, which has come out of Practical Photography magazine. I don't know what year that was. Um, I love this guy here, look. How cool is he? He's the editor. William Chung. If you're out there, William, great shirt, mate. Love the glasses, love the look, 80s. Could be 90s, but uh, A to Z of photography. Uh, that's the manual for the doubler. That's the manual for the power winder. That's the manual for the chin on CE5 camera. Um, this is a little tiny magazine with sales selling stuff in there. So that's quite handy. It's, the stuff in here is quite cheap, so I might, um, might see if I can get a bargain myself. Give them a call. Um, there's an also uh, a, a book here, which is something I'm not really interested in, but it's called Tricks, Tricks with the Camcorder. So um, I suppose, <laughs> anyway, that's Tricks with Camcorder. Then there's a 35 millimeter book as well that, uh, that came with it. And when I opened this book, I found these little pictures inside. Look, pictures of a family. Quite interesting. And they're only tiny. I'll put them back inside the book. And there's two more things that I got, which um, in the bundle was a, th a darkroom thermometer. I've got one of these, but you know, why not have a spare? And a darkroom tank for developing your film. And this hasn't even been used. This was mint, it was boxed. Um, it's a Patson one. In fact, it has been used because I used it last night on some film. Um, and you can see there's two spools inside, so it does two rolls of 35 or one roll of 120. It's only a small tank, but uh, there's no leaks or nothing like that. Seems to work all right. What, what, a, what, a, what a bargain, all this stuff for 55 quid. And I know the camera's gonna work, blinding. All these filters I'll play around with, the darkroom uh, tank, the thermometer, the books, the, the lenses and, and uh, the cable release, I've done about the penis pump, but um, all this stuff is, is, is really handy, you know, for cheap. So if you're into film photography or you're looking to start into film photography, go and have a look online um, and try and find some bargains. Do a little bit of homework on, on the cameras that you're going to be uh, looking for and, uh, you know, see if they're right for you. But, you know, you might be lucky to get a whole bundle like I did um, from somewhere local to where you live. Anyway guys, hope you liked the video. Um, watch out for me shooting this camera in the future and I'll catch you later. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and the bell so you don't miss the next one.